Hey guys, John from Nothing But Cardboard. Jumping on here with some uh, informational news. Hope you guys, um, if you like our comment, you'll subscribe, leave a like, and let us know what you think. I was at a card show Friday after work. Tampa card show swung by there. First when I was walking through, I noticed a lot of CSG tap, um, slabs on the tables for sale. And I thought it was interesting that there were so many of them. And then I was going through a guy's dollar box getting some cards and he had just got a order back from PSA. I had just gotten an order back that I had sent about the same time so we talked about that for a minute and I told him yeah we've been investing in CSG and we tried HGA out. He told me that CSG was in some type of relationship with Fanatics and that was the first time I had heard that and I thought oh that's interesting. So I'm going to share some information that I found on the internet, look some stuff up, and, you know, see what you guys think about this. So the first article is talking about that CSG was purchased by a Blackstone tac tactical group. Well, part of that group was Jay-Z and Rock Nation. It was also Mark Rubin, who was the founder and executive chairman of Fanatics holding. So that's interesting that Fanatics is uh, purchasing a card grading company. It goes on to say that Blackstone wants to accelerate CCG's growth. CCG is the mother company that's over a bunch of other companies. They do coins. Um, first of all, they've been around for 35 years. A lot of people think they're a new company. They've been around for 35 years. They've certified over 62 million items. Like I said, they've done coins, they got into comic books, they do real estate, memorabilia stuff, they were into trading cards for a while, and then and recently they just got into sporting cards, like about a, I think a little bit over a year ago when they opened. So Blackstone wants to help them get better and bigger, expand their geographic outreach and get more technologies and hire more people so they're going to pour some money into them to get them uh, better. Purchase of CSG, CCG, CSG, all of those was July 1st, 2021. And then in August 1st is when Fanatics purchased baseball, football, and basketball. So they purchased the rights to make all of those sports cards for those companies. So you got these guys that are really smart, have lots of money. They have money because they're smart and because they invest it well. And they're buying up everything in the sports cards. Fanatic's been around doing, you know, apparel, hats, posters, all kinds of stuff like that, and now they're spreading out. Um, Mark Rubin said that he wants to be a huge force in the sports card market. So they want to get into gambling, he wants to do broadcasting, he wants to get involved in every aspect of you know tickets, how tickets are purchased and everything, he wants to get into that even more. They started entering the trading card business as an NFT collectible. They purchased a company called Candy Digital and NFT is really complex. I'll do my best to explain just based on what I've seen. NFT stands for non-fungible token. I may be saying that wrong, fungible. But it's like Bitcoin, but it's different because each one is unique. Bitcoin, you can trade for each one. The non-fungible tokens is assigned to one item. And they, they describe it like a type of art, like a, um, a design or a, um, do videos with music, they could do pictures. Somebody sold a tweet off of Twitter that something happened and they signed it and, and they sold that as the NFT. So that's kind of what, what that is, my, my uh, limited knowledge of it. So they started getting involved in that and that's the digital side of it. Um, interesting because Gary V, who's well known in sports cards, he's a you know, popular um, speaker. He's going to sit on the board and be an advisor over 
their part in the NFT collectibles, the digital side of it. Now for the, the physical side. This is a quote from this article. Fanatic's plans for the physical trading card space is to expand its opening market to leverage more via direct consumer offerings to people in a familiar manner. And this is, this is what it says, which is the point that I was trying to make today. For example, should collectors purchase a trading card, they'll be able to insure the card, grade the card, store the card, and even put them on a marketplace to sell or trade. And then, of course, they would make money based on you know, transactions, revenue, whatever they're doing. So you have Fanatics that purchased a grading card company. Like I said, they've been around 35 years. They're not new. They've got AI. They've got lots of people. They're getting established. Blackstone wants to expand them and get them even more, more popular, going global, hiring more people so they can do better, do faster. Then Fanatics purchases the rights to do baseball, basketball, and football trading cards. And now they're going to open up some type of um, service, which is going to be like eBay, ComC, PWCC, all these companies together where you can purchase a raw card, get it graded. Where are they going to send it to get graded? If they purchased a grading company, they purchased it to make money. This is my point. These guys are rich, they're millionaires, they're smart because they make good investments. So they're going to allow you to purchase a card, get it graded, which I'm assuming is with their company, CSG. Store the card, so you're going to put it in a vault like PWCC, be able to sell it or trade it, and you're never even going to touch the card. You're going to go online, pick out the card, pick the grading you want or whatever. They're going to store it for you. You'll be able to put it up for auction or sale or whatever, and then they ship it out and take care of it. So Fanatics, is, they're taking hold of the market. Like I said, they want to get involved in the gambling, the media, ticket sales. They already pretty much do everything as far as jerseys and hats and um, helmets and all of that stuff. So they're really taking over. So to me, it makes sense that CSG is going to be on the rise. They may not ever become number one. PSA, BGS, we know are cemented. They've been around a long time. But if you got these millionaires putting money in to the company to get it better, it's definitely something that we, we need to look at. There's another article here that talks about that the um, sports trading card business, they're projecting it to reach 98.7 billion by 2027. And it just says that 2019 it was around 13 billion. Doesn't give anything on what it might be worth now or what they assess it at. 2020 we had the big boom with the because of the pandemic. This year started out hot, but then it's been going down ever since. So we have to be somewhere in the middle, maybe 30 to 40 billion. Maybe not even that high. Maybe let's say 30 billion. So they're saying a. Uh, 60 billion, almost 70 billion increase over the next five or six years is what they, the verified market research, people that do this type of um, research, you know, it's, it's, it's guessing, but they know what they're doing and they base it on information they have that it's going to grow. So these guys are getting involved and they're, you know, very smart in what they're doing and it's just amazing. One more thing I just wanted to point out is it says here that, um, Speculation on Wall Street is that Fanatics will also attempt to buy a trading card company. They're saying Panini may be top of the list. Panini is valued at $1.3 billion. And other companies they might look at as Upper Deck and also Leaf trading cards. So, something to pay attention to. You got millionaires buy a grading card company. Then they buy the rights to the top three sports to do cards for them. They're getting into an area they don't really know about. So they're going to buy a card company that's already out there and established that knows how to do it, already has production and everything set up. They can do the cards, they can get them sent to CSG to get them graded and either have a new one or use either eBay, PWCC. Chances are they're going to do everything themselves and just have their own fanatics 
warehouse where you can store your cards and it'd be like a vault also and get stuff taken care of. So looking over my notes to see if I, uh, a lot of stuff to swallow, a lot of stuff to look at. Um, so tell me what you guys think. I, to me, it looks like CSG is going to be on the rise. Like I said, I don't think they'll ever, in my opinion, ever be number one. But, you know, we didn't think that Topps was going to lose the right to baseball either. They've been doing baseball cards since, you know, for 75 years. If you'd have told me that somebody was going to outbid them and take over, then I would have thought, nah, that's not going to happen. Baseball you know, is always going to be with Topps. They're always going to be there, you know, doing the cards. So things change. We go through different uh, phases of life, and you think something is never going to be, you know, taken down. And it kind of makes me think of Amazon. You know, Amazon's really taken over the world where people are just ordering and buying and you get it cheaper, you get it delivered to your house, you get it in two days when you order something. And it just seems, you know, 10 years ago, if you'd have told somebody that, there's like, there's no way. You know, we're going to Walmart, we're going to Home Depot, we're going to Target. Now we just get online, set it up and they send it to you and you can get, you know, dog food once a month on the same day, every every month. So, you guys can look into this if you want to. You'll see the, uh, the header article where I got it from. Um, do your own research and please like I said leave a comment. Let me know what you think You know, we've got cards with CSG. We had a, about an 80 card order that we did back when it was eight dollars a card It went up to twelve dollars a card and We had some mid-range cards. I'd say, you know, fifty to a hundred dollars That we wanted to get graded. We didn't know how long PSA would be shut down BGS nobody knows anything they don't never hear from them. They're still grading cards, but nobody ever comments. They don't say anything. Nothing changes on the website. So we decided to send some more cards to um, CSG. They raised the rate to $12 a card, but still worth it if the values are going to go up. This is good news for the for them, you know, definitely. I'm still not a fan of the slabs. If you guys have seen any of our stuff, you've heard us complain about the slabs, how big the labels are if you don't get the subgrades and then the green color. Hopefully they're going to change that, you know, we'll see, only time will tell, but this is good news for sports cards. It's a little scary because, like I said, they are taking over every aspect, and if you want to go another direction, you know, what are you going to be able to do? And like my description with Amazon and Walmart and, you know, the little mom and pop places, they, you know, wiped them out, is Fanatics going to wipe out our um, LCS? Are the LCS is still going to have... Um, something to do. I'm hoping Fanatics apparently at the um, conference they had in California not long ago said that they want to still have the LCSs be involved and be a viable solution so hopefully they work out some way to to still make them viable and to use them to, to sell cards and to have cards so all right I've ran on long enough appreciate you guys like I said leave a like and subscribe and uh, please leave a comment all right guys have a good one